We are walking on top of Megiddo. Is this not fantastic? This is wonderful. It just still amazes me how big this place is in here. Civilization upon civilization. Could be as many as 25 civilizations built on top of each other. This is total man-made. Everything you see in all those digs over here have all been built on top. This is not a natural setting here. We're following Dr. Hudson. Now, Ethan, if you can film that over there, you'll see a circular uh, altar. They believe it's one of the oldest altars found in archaeological digs. It is a Canaanite, possibly a Canaanite altar, which would have had any oils or animals sacrificed on it. There was a lot of polytheistic uh, uh, rituals going on for quite a long time here. Now we're going down, we, we passed the gash where the University of Chicago in uh, the earlier generations would dig down to their um, uh, different archaeological digs. Now, as Dr. Hudson said, it's more careful and it's more of a brushing and a, a, a more softer, careful layering and recording as we go. But we're still walking on it and, and as Ethan is showing you as we're going around, look how far out this goes. That is the residential section right next to the King's Gate. We are heading on up. We, we are heading to the southern stables, according to the sign here, of the uh, many different uh, horses that were owned by the kings. Could be Solomon himself, and I tend to believe that personally, but it's open for debate as to uh, you know, which king actually built these stables, but they're huge, they're huge in here. In the Book of Kings, it registers that Solomon had his uh, uh, forced labor to make the gates of this area. We do have that in First Kings, I believe it's chapter 9. And then it also talks about the many different uh, uh, horses that were here. 4,000 maybe? Or something like that. Now we're coming up to uh, Dr. Hudson is going to be explaining uh, some more of this. Now we're coming into an area that's been dug down pretty radically. He's going to be sharing some things here. So, Dr. Hudson, before you get going, give us an idea of uh, something around here. We can tell the uh, the the students that are here and uh, watching this tape. About Megiddo? Oh, right here. Yeah. What, what, what you see right here. Oh, well, okay. Idea. Well, the reason why I stop here is I want to talk about their factories and their religion. And so we're going to talk about standing stones and we're going to talk about grinding grain. And then we're going to go up and look at the warehouse, uh, their uh, Walmart, if you will, next. Well, this is a, a surprising thing. When you think about Armageddon, you're thinking all violence and a one shot deal and everything. You had civilizations here doing very normal things. And I guess some are normal well, things, you know, not here. normal, but people you know, this here. is people who lived here too. So the civilizations you know, had daily life here. So that's what we're looking at and makes a little bit of a surprise. Okay, so let me show you this. There are two things I want you to see over here. Uh, look at their bread making factory. Do you see it? Now they, they put them together. Do you see where they made their bread? And, ground their grain. There you go. So they had grinding stones and that is actually, you're going to see a lot of that, that's basalt. That's volcanic rock. It's not my field, it's just what they tell me. That's volcanic rock and look how you could grind your cornbread in there. Mm -mm. Homemade <laughs> cornbread, buttermilk and yeah. And so this was those three stones right there uh, this is how they ground their grain, uh, maybe for porridge or for bread and so forth. But the real reason we're stopping here, we're going to hurry before they get over here. Look at these standing stones. You see, there's a standing stone. There's a standing stone. There's one on its side over there, the basalt. This is polytheism. This is polytheism and, and maybe Baal worship and this is essentially typically you had two stones in the cultic area one representing the male god and one representing the goddess so maybe one representing Baal and one representing Asherah his consort and when you look at the Old Testament I'm going to be way too simplistic here uh, and so just take this with a grain of salt. But when you come to the Old Testament, you're looking at an epic battle between a desert religion and a fertility religion. Moses, the religion of Moses is a desert religion. It comes from the desert. Yahweh is a desert God. 
all right? I'm just speaking as a scholar here, all right? Uh, it, it, is a, it is a desert god. Polytheism is typically a fertility god, had god has uh, gods and goddesses, and uh, these standing stones would actually represent the presence of the deity. And so uh, the worship of Baal is a fertility religion. The worship of Yahweh is a desert religion. Okay, it's going up. 